ladies and gentlemen, another field parameters video. Yay! So to my defense, I actually ask you, do you really want to have another field parameters video? And you said yes. And I truly appreciate that you told me why you want it. You said that you wanted my opinion. You wanted to know when to use it, when not to use it, you know, thoughts around it, not only the clicks, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to show you three use cases. We will go through if it makes sense to use, to use a field parameter or not. We will talk about the implementation of it. I'm not like too crazy about it. There's another vendor that has had this before, and I think their implementation is better. I'll show you that too. And just a, a discussion about when it makes sense to use it, so you don't go nuts and start putting them everywhere, because it doesn't make sense to put them everywhere. Okay, let's get started. So field parameters, what is it? It allows you with a slicer to change the dimensions of metrics of a visual, okay, in, in short words. And to create them, I'm going to show you in this case, this is our first scenario. I have this table and I have category name and then the sales. Let's say that we want to be able to switch this from product to category name. So what you would do to do it is you go to modeling, new parameter fields, and then you grab the fields that you want, the fields that you need. Uh, you will go to product name, create, and it will create a table in the background. It will create also a slicer if you tell it to, and it will show you this table here. Put a name to this thing. This will name the table. The parameter will still be called parameter. These two are hidden. I actually have show hidden, so you will see them here, but if you don't have that, it will only show this parameter. Probably you want to change the name of the parameter too. So you can just rename it. Uh, we can call it category parameter. Okay, and what it does is it creates this slicer. And when you click on it, nothing happens yet. You have to set it up. So we're going to click on the table. And instead of category name, we're going to put the parameter. It works a little bit like a calculation group, I guess. So you see, it changes. So if you don't select anything, it will show you everything. In the matrix, it shows it quite nicely because it will show you a hierarchy. If you have another type of visual, it will just flatten everything and it will show you everything. Now, in this case, I think it makes more sense to have only these because most of the time, what you're going to do is you want to see the category and then you just want to see the products within that category. And then you want to, you know, you want to have the hierarchy and you want to see the values within the hierarchy. What this does is the exact same thing as that one, I think it is. It flattens everything. So it goes to the next level and then it, boom, expands everything, which there might be some cases where you want to have it, but most of the time you want to you wanna navigate through the hierarchy. You want to see ca country and city, you know, of that country. And then, right, so if you use these, you would just get flattened hierarchies all the time. I would not recommend that. So for hierarchies, don't. Don't use these parameters. I don't think they are useful. So let's go to the next scenario. In this case, we are going to, instead of changing dimensions, we are going to change the measures. So what is being measured here? And let's do a new field parameter, field, and then I'm going to put, uh, I want to have, I can actually search for it, I can have quantity, and then I can have previous, like, sales, and then I want to have isolated previous year sales, for example. And then it will create again another parameter. We're going to call these measures slicer. So, and then what it does is if you click on quantity, or oh, not yet, I have to obviously put the parameter in there, give a proper name to this thing, you're going to end up with tables everywhere. 
measures slicer. So, and then put it into the visual. I had it right. So then you did quantity, show your quantity, sales, it shows your sales and previous year sales. Okay, so then you can do select all, and that's what I mean. I mean, if you don't select anything now, it will show you everything. It flattens everything now. Boom. And sometimes it might make sense to do that. Other times it does not. Okay. So in this case, you might want to see sales in previous year sales and then quantity in previous year quantity. So you don't want to mix them together. You want to be able to say, show me just the sales or show me just the quantity. And then you might end up with a ton of these type of slicers just to change here. We're going to talk about at the end the aspects of from a user perspective, not just for the technical part of it. But there is actually a solution for making this work a little bit better. Let me show you. So on, on the third scenario, we're going to reuse these uh, parameter Put it as a slicer. So let me show you this before we move forward. If we go to the measure, to the relationship pane, you're going to see that it creates a new table every time you create a new parameter. So this is going to be like full with tables everywhere. There are ways you can clean this up a little bit. I'll show you too. Um, so here we have the category parameter. This is the measure slicer that we just created. You can see that there are tables. You can actually see them actually, you know, look at the table that was created. You have the measure slicer. This is the parameter that's been used. And then this is the parameter order. So when you click on them, you can see here the actual DAX that was uh, generated. Now, there is no way to actually get this user interface back to other remote columns. Once you create it, either you delete it or recreate it, or you use stacks to add columns. So we're going to use stacks to add stuff to this thing. So I want to have um, previous year accumulated sales. And this is accumulated sales. And then I want to have the, this number is the order that they will appear on the slicer. Nice touch. So put it there. And this is not sales, this is going to be quantity. And this is going to be quantity. And then this is going to be quantity. And this is going to be quantity. This is four, five. Okay. So now we have a slicer with all this stuff. Some of them are for sales, some of them are for quantity. So how do we separate them so we can actually choose sales in one group and choose quantity in another? So what I'm going to do to do that, I'm going to go back to Power Query because I would like to create my new tables in Power Query, not in DAX. You can do it in DAX if you want. No shame on that. And I'm going to call this a measure type. This is going to be the quantity. And I'm going to have three of these because we have three measure types, and then I'm going to have sales, and then I'm going to have three of these two, and then this is going to be the ID. And quantity, I think it was like, I think it was like zero, one, I don't remember, just a second. Three, four, five, I think, not sure, measure type. Click OK. And then this has to be a number. I'm going to send back to the model. Where is my measure type? Here it is. So I'm going to now go to the relationship pane and I need to create a relationship between these two babies, right? Um, where are you? <sighs> So I'm going to have ID with the parameter order. And this is going to be the relationship. I don't want to have it a many too many. I want to have it a one too many. Did a many too many because they are unique on both sides and they probably will always be, but that's fine. Um, now we go back and I'm going to have that 
measure type as a slicer. Okay. And this one, I want to have it as a single select. So I have now my quantity there. And as you can see, it already does it. So when I click on quantity, it shows me only the quantity fields. And then when I click on them, let me add the visual. I need to have the measure slicer instead of sales and quantity, right? So you can see that I can control, click, and add. You can always, always change the behavior of that so you don't control, click, click. Select all you might want to have it, right? Or you can have like quantity, or you can click on sales. And the problem with, you know, these slicers, unfortunately, once you change it, they, they don't, they, you know, part of it remembers them. I don't like that feature on slicers at all. You need to click the raise button and then the sales only will appear. Something that you can do is deselect them and then click on quantity, right? So as you can see, this is another um, application of field parameters that if you are a finance person, you're going to absolutely love because I see the way they work and they normally are comparing all kinds of metrics with each other and even all kinds of dimensions. That's why they like click so much because they could do that very, very easily. So when it comes to limitations, one thing that you need to be very, very aware of is that this obviously only works with the latest version of Power BI Desktop. If your users are using Power BI Desktop, this thing will not work. Obviously, if they are consuming your reports on the service, it's no problem. But if they are you know, using it as a data analyst and they are opening it in Power BI Desktop, you need to be sure that they have the latest version. More limitations is the AI visuals and Q&A aren't supported with the feature yet. I don't know if they are going to be in the future, but at least at the moment they are not. Um, there is no way for users to click none. As you saw, when you don't select anything, everything shows. You cannot create parameters in live connection data sets. And you cannot use it with implicit measures. You will see that when you click on it, it will not work. Okay. Okay, so another thing. Field parameters create a new table, disconnected table, as I showed you before on the model. Okay, so if you go to the relationship pane, you zoom out, you'll see all these tables. These are the field parameters that I have. So I'd like to have my models clean and organized. <laughs> I have to have it. So how do you deal with this mess? The easiest way for me, I think, is to do these modeling views. In one, you have just the model, and in the other one, you have just the parameters. So you click everything, and then you just select the actual model, all the tables, click on them, and then delete, and then remove and diagram, okay? And then you can just move them and zoom in, right? So you have one view for the model, and then you have one view for all the parameters and it will make life easier for you. At least that's how I would solve the fact that there are like tables everywhere. Obviously, you can connect these um, parameter fields uh, with or parameter tables with your model or you can connect it with a, another disconnected table as I showed you. So there are tons of tons of possibilities. So now let me show you an implementation made by another vendor that has these capabilities since a long time ago, and I think it's a lot better. So we're going to go back to scenario two. We're going to restrict these. So let me filter this a little bit so just sales are shown, right? <coughs> so one thing that, you know, when I first saw the, um, the field parameters implemented on click, my first thought, it was like, why don't you just drop the fields that you need on the values, right? So you are doing field parameters for exploratory reports. Exploratory reports, it means like you're doing data analysis there. There are two types of reports. You have explanatory and exploratory. Explanatory is when everything is served for you. You just look at it and see, oh, sales go up or down and you don't want to click anymore. You're happy. 
exploratory is when you want to dig down in the data. So this is for the type of exploratory reports. That's where field parameters should be used. If you are digging deep into the data, you probably need to have Power BI Desktop. I've seen it in countless of cases with my customers where you have report consumers that are happy to just look at whatever you created and then you have people that actually need to dig deep into the data and for that they need Power BI Desktop. So what I was thinking like, okay, why don't you just drop the fields that you need in the field frame and it will change. Obviously, I understand the convenience of having a filter that does that, that switches things. But for those that are just report consumers, it's going to be extremely confusing. Let me tell you why I think that. A filter filters data, right? So every time you go in Power BI and click on something, it filters the data. It does not change the measures or dimensions, it filters. Now we have filters that do not filter data, that changes things that happen on the, cam on the visualization. And I find that very confusing, to be fair. And that's why I've always been like, since I've seen it on, you know, they've done demos before on these conferences, like uh, the fact that they chose regular slicer to do this type of work, I find it very, very confusing. I think that for users that just use Power BI to, to consume, it's not going to be ideal at all. I want to show you what Click has done, and I think it's a fantastic implementation. Have they done that even here in Power BI? My data heart would have been super, super happy. Unfortunately, this is not what we get. Let me show you what they did. So this is Click Sense. So this is like the Power BI desktop of the Click world. And then you have here on this visualization, you can see that you have a measure, which is the sum of sales, but then you have alternative measures, right? So these have alternative measures. Look at what happens. I'm going to get rid of the sound. So once it defines the alternative measures, it, you know, there's a drop down there that allows you to, within the visual, change the measure then you're more aware of what you're actually doing. You know, you are, as a user, changing that. It's not like you filter something here and something happens somewhere else, like where it happens. You are actually doing on the visual itself. And I think that this implementation is absolutely brilliant. I love it. I, I wish that we had this type of implementation instead of a slicer. Because the slicer thing that it sometimes filters, sometimes changes things on the visual is confusing, that's all. So hopefully this will be something that gets implemented because this makes all the sense in the world to me and it makes it so intuitive as to what is changing, where is changing and to what. So summa summarum of um, field parameters, should you use them? Absolutely, absolutely. It's going to be a wonderful feature. People are going to find like super creative ways to use it. Definitely, but always have your audience in mind. Who are you creating the field parameters to and why? So when you see yourself creating a field parameter on a report, you need to think to yourself like, are you doing it because you think it's cool or are you doing it because it's needed for that report in that place? You know what I mean? So be critical with yourself. I understand that new features are cool to implement and you want to show everybody, but not everybody is super happy with everything, you know? They, they, sometimes you just want to have simplicity. And if you are using or creating an explanatory report, field parameters have no place there. If you're doing an exploratory report for data analysts, I want to dig deep into the data fabulous, right? So have all those things in mind before going ahead and putting the slicers everywhere. It will be confusing for the users just because of the way it got implemented. So, those are my two cents on the thing. Let me know what you think, what your thoughts are in the comment box, and I will see you again next week with another Power BI video. So if you have something in mind, let me know. Uh, have a nice weekend, and see you soon.